All right, guys, we are here. The hype is growing. It is time for the unveil. This is a world exclusive. First time brought to you on the Alienware Twitch channel. We have Roller, Coaster, Tycoon, Failed right there. Hold on just a second. I did not completely set it up right. All right, let's do that intro again. Roller, Coaster, Tycoon, World. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this game is here. I am joined by Matt from Atari. Let me make sure he's not muted. There we go. He is unmuted. Matt, Ooh, unmuted. tell us what you do at Atari. Hey, so I am Matt LaBunka, the producer, the executive producer of Roller Coaster Tycoon World. Awesome. I, yeah, I get to uh, get to represent Atari and, and help make this amazing game with uh, the team over at Invisio. Actually, there's another person on cam or off camera that you can't see. He is our uh, technical director of the game. He's the one that's driving right now. It's, uh, it's Leonard and I had talks. Thanks for inviting us. Yeah, no problem. This game, guys, this game is so next gen that I'm mind controlling. Look at this, <laughs> hands free. Roller coaster, tycoon world, hands free, mind control, awesome. All right, so we have viewers, young, old. I'll throw myself in that bucket. Um, the roller coaster, tycoon franchise has been around for a while. Um, when is when was the last roller coaster tycoon world or roller coaster tycoon franchise game? Sure, the last game was about. Definitely over 10 years ago. Okay. Um, if you're counting the PC games. Right. Uh, of course, we did release a mobile game uh, a little sooner than that, but uh, I guess in, in this sort of caliber of game, yeah. over 10 years, actually. Wow. Okay, so a lot of you guys may not even be that familiar with the franchise. So why don't you just kind of let, – let's, let's start up really high, and I know there's a lot of people that – know the story and know the history, but let's make sure that everybody can kind of understand and appreciate where it's been and where you guys are taking it next. So, like, what is the overall theme of the of the franchise in the series? Okay, yeah, so oh, there's a little bit of an echo. Is that, does everyone can hear me? We good? Yeah, they'll, they'll let us know. Uh, <laughs> yes, they I'll will. I'll mute while you talk. I'm, okay, I'll mute cool. while you talk. So yes, the, the the game the last game came out over ten years ago. We are now making the next PC installment of the game. It will come out on uh, PCs later this year, as well as Steam OS for some of those users that don't know. Um, it is a roller coaster building game and theme park simulation. You know, layered on top of that, right? So we've got tons of different great rides, uh, lots of different roller coasters, and a really sort of simplified amazing tools uh, to build all that kind of stuff. And then on top of that, we layer this really deep and what we're calling really smart simulations so that, you know, you know, we want the, the builders out there to be able to make really, really cool, uh, you know, theme parks. And on top of that, we want the people that can just, uh, you know, want to just sort of run a theme park like me. I'm actually one of those people. I like just sort of enjoying uh, that have the ability to do that. So. Awesome. So there's a lot of there's a lot of layers to the game, right? It's it's really managing, owning, operating, looking at feedback from your attendees to the park, right? And making the yeah. right adjustments. Maybe there's as much micromanaging as you want, right? Maybe there's not enough restrooms. Maybe there's not enough food concessions. Maybe your roller coaster sucks. <laughs> like things yeah. like that, right? <laughs> yeah. So our job is really to try and make a game that allows you to do anything you want inside of you know the sort of world of roller coaster tycoon uh we don't want to put limits on 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 what you can do right our, our we really just want to create this amazing environment and then give you the tools to go ahead and customize it to to your greatest sort of degree um yeah so so actually if you we want we can i can sort of take take you guys through it um yeah let's do that cool so what you guys are looking at here is is a sandbox mode. It's a, it's actually a park built by one of uh, uh, the general manager of the studio, Kim. She's off camera as well. Uh, she built it earlier this week. This is a development build. I do want to stress that. Uh, so there's still a lot uh, for us to do, but we're really happy with the game, the way the game is uh, looking right now. I, I got to pause you just for okay. a second, guys. This 
is a all-time record. I'm looking at the Twitch numbers right now. We're over 1,000 viewers right now. 1,000 viewers. All right, go ahead. Let, let's keep the hype going. Let's keep it going. I'm sorry. We're gonna we're gonna get higher. I mean, this is the, this is the good. Keep the hype going. We got. So, yeah. So what we're looking at here is a demo. Or, 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 sorry. What we're looking at here is a is a, it's essentially like if you were to play the game earlier this week and you were in the sandbox and you saved it and you loaded it up here at PAX, this is what's going on, right? So Andy here is kind of driving us through. He's showing you what the game looks like. It's it's rendering at I, almost a 4K. I think this screen might be just, just shy of 4K, but it does work in beautiful 4K. You know, it's really important for us to build a game that works for, for the next 10 years, right? You know, that's where we want to make sure that it, it, it sets up just the next level of the franchise, right? Um, so what, what he, Andy's showing you here on the screen is just one of our hayrides. Um, we, uh, we wanted to build rides that certainly emulate what you see in real life, um, but for you know, a variety of reasons, both fun and otherwise, we don't want to copy them exactly. Um, at least not in this, this version of the game yet. Right, okay. Yeah. So he can actually show you there that you can see the, uh, the, power, the power supply to that ride, right? We want people to realize that this is a real sort of theme park. We want you to be enveloped in the game. So we're adding that extra level of realism. And he'll scroll over to the wooden Western wheel here. Another one of our uh, rides. I love the way it looks because you can actually see these sort of individual bolts. Yeah, I was about to say that. Like the, the detail within that seat is awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. I mean, the peeps are bouncing around a little bit. I get that. That's we have a couple, couple it's months early. still. Yeah, yeah. A couple months still left to go. The Q4 2015 is over, but um, yeah. So that Western wheel, you know, we made sure that we went in and detailed all of the individual bolts, right? Just really sort of paying attention to the details, because quite frankly, that is what our fans asked for, right? Um, and yes, I, I noticed some of the comments. People are saying the the people are moonwalking around the theme park. Yeah, that's our moonwalk mode here for PAX, a.k.a. development build mode. I get it. <laughs> that will certainly not be the case. So, so when it comes to attractions that you can put into uh, in, in, into your park, water rides, water rides possible? Yep, so a lot of people have been asking about water rides. Um, we have water in the game. That's all I'm going to say for now. But, uh, yeah, actually, this is, this is a good segue. I like this. It's good. This is going to work. So... We're going to pan over to the side of the, the park here. We'll show you some stuff that actually wasn't on the floor demo. Um, we're going to do some terrain deformation. It was locked in the floor demo. It's going to be unlocked. It's unlocked here in the build that we're using for this. So what Andy's showing you is we've removed the grid in the game. Um, what that means is you can literally modify the terrain in any way you want. You can modify the paths. You can modify you place the rides any way you want. You can um, place the coasters almost any way you want, right? So it's kind of just lifted the limits on the building of the game. So then what he's doing here is digging holes. Andy loves to dig holes and build some mountains for us. Um, you can paint the terrain with a bunch of different textures. You can um, you can drag paths over them. That's what he's doing now. Um, you'll notice that it's automatically putting the supports. Of course, you can go up and down with the paths just like you would want to. That hole can be filled with water. Um, the roller coasters reflect really beautifully over the water, right? We want to make sure the game just looks that, amazing. That, that is cool to uh, just to, to, to do outside of the park, right? So I can now get a very cool and unique uh, viewpoint, uh, maybe when I'm riding in first person, that I'm able to, you know, change the environment outside of the park. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, like you said, in this game, you can ride every single one of the rides. You can ride every single one of the coasters. And I'll, and I'll show you, like, we've made sure that the rides look good both inside and out because that's yet another layer to the game. Um, and I do notice some people are like, yes, great, the grid is gone. Um, but we've had actually a lot of interesting feedback while we've been here. Uh, people are like, well, what about if I really want to make everything really straight and I want 90 degree and 45 degree angles? And we're like, oh, my God, you asked us to remove the grid. What do we do? Uh, <laughs> that said, there we actually have an on-demand grid that you can generate as you're playing the game. And depending on what building mode you're in, 
you just hit the G button on your keyboard um, and it will generate a grid right in that spot and lock it to that. So if you do want to build that perfect park, you can do that. And also, I, I noticed someone asked about the size of the parks. So, so Andy's going to place this ride for us. It's uh, the gravity yeah, flux. Right, and then he's going to zoom out. This is the full size of the park that you see here, right? Uh, you can build that in that entire space. But we've limited the PAX demo to this little area because honestly, it's a little overwhelming when someone goes up to a laptop uh, over at the NVIDIA booth and they're like, oh my God, I have all this space, what do I do? So this is a sandbox mode. It's one of three modes in the game. Uh, there's a scenario mode and campaign mode. Uh, but in the, in the campaign mode, there is a fence and it expands as you play, sort of like a linear breadcrumbed uh, campaign. But we put it here in this sandbox just for the purpose of the demo. So I don't want people to be afraid that, um, you know, the, the park isn't as big as they, as they would hope. It's actually bigger than it's ever been before. So, okay. Back to the cool stuff. So back to the rides. Um, so this Gravity Flux ride is, uh, you know, one of over 30 flat rides in the game. Uh, which is, that's a great, you know, number to start with. You have a lot to do there. Yeah. So... What he's showing you is that it's detailed both inside and outside the ride. That's, like I said, because you can ride every single one of them. Yeah. You know? so, it, so we're able to ride everything. Are we able to just walk through the park in that first-person view also? So you can attach a camera to the front of a peep and experience the park as he's experiencing it, right? Um, you know, we know there's a lot of content creators that love just sort of um, recording what they've made, right. and, and that's definitely part of that, right? Like, how do you experience the park as a guest? Um, and so, yeah, that's why we've paid attention to this detail. I mean, if Andy's just shows you the, the light reflecting off of the ride, you can see that that's, that's some of the, you know, actually NVIDIA tech that we put in the game that allows it to look like a real sort of texture on that ride. Awesome. Uh, now, within this demo, uh, is it, are we able to ride something yet or is that not, not in this yet. demo okay that said maybe if you guys invite us back later this fall we might be able to do a little first person absolutely yes yeah. so I, I see you guys asking i asked the question it's not ready in this build of the game but as soon as it is absolutely you guys you guys have an open invitation you know to come on awesome. uh and and when you're ready to reveal the next set of stuff they've got to keep things in their pocket this is the first time we really can't show you everything but you will be able to ride it. That, that's 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 got to last for so some time. Yeah, that's actually a key point. So there are a lot of things that are sort of disabled for this build because, like you said, you know, you got to market the game somehow, right? So there's there's a couple of big reveals planned for later this year. Um, we're really happy that we're able to show off so much of the building aspects of the game right now, and then you'll see a lot of cool stuff come um, as we kind of go through the fall. So, um, so this game's been a and, and, in development, you know, you got a lot of work. I, we can see there's been a lot of work put in here. We're right now at that transition where Win 10 just came out, DX12 support. Is that something you guys have talked about? Is it we want to finish the game that we have in our heads ready and then we'll consider and talk about DX12? Or have you guys already made that commitment to DX12 support? Yeah, so uh, it's, a, it's an interesting tech question. Actually, it's a great question for Andy, who, who is okay. off camera, our technical <laughs> right. director. So I, mean, I get to put, be put on the spot for this one. But um, so the game is built in Unity 5.1. So we support typically what, what they support, right? Um, DX12 is something new. So we're still looking at that as a, as a technology. That said, the game will definitely work on Windows 10. Um, I can say it works on SteamOS as well, actually. So if you, if you want to go buy a cool Alienware Steam box, there you go. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you, can, uh, you can actually sit down in front of a TV and play the game. Uh, we have Steam controllers back at the office uh, that we've been testing out the game out. And I'll, and I'll point out how actually making sure that the game works on a controller um, has simplified the coaster building to make it so easy to build really cool stuff. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. I still want to focus on the flat ride. So, so Andy, don't go away for that. Don't come back. Um, but yeah, we, we were demoing the game at Gamescom to press, and we actually did it on a TV. 
Um, and it was, it was cool. It's like the first time you ever sat in front of a TV and experienced Roller Coaster Tycoon. It, it totally sort of changes the experience. Um, so yeah, so, so coming back to our demo. What you see here is a flat ride. And he's put a bunch of scenery around that ride. Because if he actually clicks the ride, um, you'll see this sort of green sphere of influence pop up along around the ride. The, the reason for that is because we do have a bunch of themes in the game. Um, you know, right now we're showing off adventure, west, uh, western, and a sci-fi theme. And we noticed that a lot of our fans would play the games and they'd spend a ton of time getting really, really intricate with their theme parks and, and spending that extra time to really theme out the park, right? To make sure that it's like, okay, just like a real theme park where we actually have the best field trips ever to, to go and visit. Uh, I'm not going to lie about that. So to get inspired, inspired, right? Of course. Um, so he, the theming that you put around rides will actually go to the rides uh, attributes. So we have a bunch of different peeps in the game. Um, there, there's tons and tons of different peeps and they all like different things. So just like before, you know, they're going to vomit. They're going to need to go to the bathroom. They get hungry. They get upset at you if you don't do something right. You know, they'll look at the rides, all that kind of stuff. They have excitement, intensity, and nausea, and all that kind of stuff. Um, on top of that, you know, they'll like the thrill rides, the family rides, and all that. Is, of course, that's all standard. That's been there. Uh, but we've added this sort of theme desire, I guess. So you'll see a ride with a Western theming and that will attract peeps that like those kinds of rides. So it, it creates a more realistic theme park. It, it's it's kind of neat. It, it like, um, it changes the, the way the people in your park flow around, right? It, it's a smarter simulation. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's see, let's pan around over to the coasters. So I, I, I did an interview yesterday. A lot of people were concerned about the sort of number of coasters in the game. Okay. There are definitely a, a lot of coasters in the game. I do read the forums, so they, they call me. I'm lurking in the forums. That I am viewing threads. I am reading them, so don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> but so Andy just deleted a wooden coaster that one of our designers built um, earlier this week. So. While he's sort of building out a coaster, and I'll, I'll talk about the rides in a second, um, or the controls rather for the, for the coasters, there are four types of track um, that we have that we've sort of distilled down the the number of different coasters or track types, and those are steel and uh, inverted wooden and a launch track, right? So that's sort of the box track. Like we we spent a lot of time looking at tracks, and, and we actually have this like master spreadsheet in the office of just roller coaster okay. track tracks and what goes with what and what station and car and all that stuff. So uh, along, uh, along the similar line, um, are there uh, transport type rides or is there, can you go underground? Yeah, yep, yep. I see Dark. those the questions. You them? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's good. good. It's good you're pointing out the, the, the questions. So we're not showing off any transport rides or going underground. So. Tackling the underground question, that is a technical problem that is really difficult to, ch to solve for uh, simulation games. Um, you'll notice our friends at a, at a recent city builder uh, had to do tunnels after launch. Um, it's definitely something that we, when we do it, we want to do it right. We'll provide it to fans free, but I'm not sure it's going to be it. Okay. Because again, we have a really, really high quality bar. And we're only going to release things as they're ready. Really? But that said, those sort of core features, uh -huh. we're going to release the fans for free as we go. Nice. I think that's important, right? We yeah. want to make sure you get that value for the game, you know, as you're playing through it. Um, so, yeah, so there is that. What are you building? <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> so, so he's building a hyper coaster, which that's is awesome. one of the ten kinds of coasters in the game. Um, there are wooden coasters and dive coasters and standing coasters and a, and a whole bunch more. Each of those coasters, um, each of those coasters has two sort of pre-built subtypes. 
So I know when you look at RCT3, you, you know, you'll see over 30 kinds of coasters, right? Um, that game has two expansion packs behind it. Um, but at the same time, for us, that's not an excuse, right? Um, we want this game to feel just as robust. And each of those pre-built coasters is how you get like your wooden sort of generic coaster, your wooden sort of mine coaster, right? So it, I say 10 coaster types. That's really the, the main sort of cars, right? And how they sit on the track and the station that goes with them. And then, then you get a bunch of themed coasters that come from that, right? And then uh, on top of that, we're going to have the pre-built coasters that are made by our designers. Um, it was just nothing compared to what the community out there is going to build, but, um, you know, for those more casual players. So, okay, to the coaster builder. Um, I know a lot of people have sort of seen the videos coming from PAX. Um, this is sort of similar to some of those demos. What Andy has built out here is a hyper coaster. Um, he's showing you how you can edit the coaster at any point. You no longer need to build piece by piece, or you no longer need to sort of erase uh, track. You can just pick that track up, like right there, hit the one key on, or the one key on your keyboard, and it'll just raise up. It auto generates the extra pieces that you need. Right? It's it's just really really cool and really easy to build just amazing stuff. All right, uh, j just real quick, just just to sure. add, just to address everybody on the channel, you're wondering how all this is happening. Some of you may be thinking that this is a video. Let me introduce you to the man, <laughs> Andy, the technical director. He's right here. See that keyboard? Look at that pretty lights, alien effects. He is doing all of the driving. He is right here to my left. All right, so this is not smoke and mirrors. We wouldn't do that to you here on the Alienware YouTube channel. Atari wouldn't do that to you. The developer will not do that to you. This is truly being built live in front of me. There's no need for us to do that, right? We know the game. We're really happy with, with the, the game has come out. And, and a lot of that is due to the fan feedback, right? Because we read what the fans wanted on the forums, and we wanted to make sure that we fit the style. So, yeah, so he's building a really cool coaster here. Um, oh, there it goes. <laughs> Oops. Um, so yes, the coasters, of course, fly off the tracks just like you would expect them to, right? He's going to try and adjust this coaster to, uh, to, make, to prevent that from happening. There he goes. He's added a bunch of boosters. That's what you see. If he zooms in, you can see the detail, the lighting, the bolts on the, on the supports. The wheels all move on the track, right? All that is there. Um, the, the coaster generates the shadows as it goes up the track, just like you would expect. Just really, really cool and beautiful looking game, right? That is that is the truth. Um, there you go. So I, it's funny, uh, one of the fans asked, why would I expect coasters to fly up the track? Well, that's a roller coaster tycoon, right? So <laughs> our job is to build a game that just allows you to do whatever you want, right? Um, so actually, Andy, if he pulls one of the tracks, I'm gonna I'm gonna point this out because it might not have come through in some of the, the like the over the shoulder. Just grab one of the track pieces, uh, the nodes. Yeah. So you'll notice it changes colors underneath. Um, the reason for that is the coaster editor is super powerful, right? Um, and we know people there that are gonna be able to just build amazing things. But the the more casual player might feel a little intimidated so we give them a hint guide as they're playing as to what might happen right so when it's red it means it's likely going to fly off the track you've made that angle a little too steep um, of course you can still do that right we're not going to say no if you want to go and run a coaster off the track and have it fly into a bunch of buildings or or your park guests which is horrible horrible stuff uh, you can do that but if it's white that means it's generally be going to generally be okay right so this is all part of the safety rating, which is what we've added as an extra rating to the to all the rides and coasters. So there's intensity, excitement, nausea, and now safety rating. Um, and, and that safety rating actually can change as maintenance changes. So if you don't spend that money to to sort of hire mechanics. Next, the upkeep, yeah. Yeah, if you don't upkeep your rides, they become less safe, and there's a higher likelihood that things will fly off the track, right? That is part of us making the simulation of the game sort of, you know, impactful and smart, right? 
So uh, actually, another note on that, you know, just we've extended that. So Andy's just going to keep playing here um, with the game. So while he does that, maybe he'll decorate out the coaster a little bit, show you some of the trees swaying and stuff like that. Um, there was a, a question about multiplayer support. So what is, is there anything that you could talk about as far as multiplayer with the game? Sure. So we, I know, uh, like a year ago, we had talked about. So you, actually, it's cool. You can see the sphere of influence for your coasters even there for those people that are really gonna. Um, so so a year ago, we talked about multiplayer in the game, right? And we announced this sort of. Um, for park mode and, and stuff like that. We decided when, uh, you know, earlier this year, we're looking at the game, you know, what does the community really want? What are they focusing on? What is going to make just a great game, right? Um, and one of those core features is mod support, right? So we decided, okay, if we're going to do mod support, then let's pause multiplayer for now. Let's see what people do and make sure that we really get multiplayer right, because that is a feature that is super complicated, right? You're involving servers and a bunch of other extra stuff um, that y you need to do. And, and we know, we know, we have a guy at the studio. He's like the, well, he's like the Steam Workshop guy. He's like a guru. We hired him. He's just amazing. This is what he does. He lives and breathes modding. And he built these like ridiculous modding tools for us. Um, we're not going to show it here because the UI on the modding uh, controls isn't quite ready, but uh, we were showing it to press, so you might read it in some of the articles. You're able to pull in pretty much any kind of scenery you want into the game. So if you want to build some sort of crazy theme or, or support that we don't have, then you can just pull that in, right? Um, so, so yeah, so we, we prioritize modding for launch. We're going to have full mod support, custom scenery, peeps, and some rule set modding. And then... After launch, we're going to do the multiplayer stuff. So we're just watching him build a wooden coaster here. So there's some people that are uh, interestingly interested in being destructive with their park. <laughs> so can you, lot what happens if they ride and completely get launched off the ride. Do people die in the world of Coaster Tycoon? World? Okay, interesting question. So while I'm talking, I'm going to ask Andy to build just a coaster to just sort of flies, right? We're going to, we're going to do that uh, for you guys. But the um, we've, like I said, we've added safety to the game as a safety rating. Uh, we've also added medical staff to the game. So before you only had a first aid station, and if you had someone that was nauseous, they would all, you know, they would just go to the first aid station and that was it. Um, what we now have is a little like first aid EMT guy walking around your theme park helping your guests. Um, the game is, we're, you know, we are shooting for an ESCB rating that is, you know, E for everyone, is open to as many people as possible, like the older games. But that said, uh, we have kind of a fun way that if the coaster hits a bunch of people, we have a cool little like animation that I'm not going to reveal right now. Um, but, you know, I think we've handled the sort of peep death uh, scenario well. I think it's going to be funny in classic sort of RCT style um, that you can still do uh, exactly what you want to do. So, I th yeah, there it goes. So there, there it goes. Go. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Got to get it up the loop. Get it up the side. So, <laughs> there we go. We're gonna we're gonna see if this happens. Andy's having that coaster go up that track. But yeah, so so we do have that medical staff, and and again, um, we've also, uh, I guess, refocused some of the simulation um, or or made it smarter, right? Dude, you gotta bank that the other way. There you go. Um, so, the the simulation in the game is smarter in a sense that instead of now worrying about that hourly wage of a single sort of staff member, we want you to focus on a more macro scale, right? Certain aspects are fun to micromanage. Yes, it's cool to see what you know how much things cost and you know what you're selling in all your shops and all that kind of stuff. There it goes. Almost, we're getting there. It's like the quest as we talk to finish this roller coaster. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so 
the the simulation and the in the ride. Now you're going to focus on the budget for mechanics, yes. right? Right. You're going to focus on placing mechanic stations in the parks to make sure that there's coverage, right? And we think that's going to allow you to still have the same level of depth and detail, but allow you to take care more of more of your theme park, right? Um, so we're we're excited about how that's going to turn out. Can you still charge your guests to? use 20 cents 20 cents to go to the bathroom yes of course you want to have paid toilets no. in your theme park you can <laughs> everyone andy people are getting upset just bank it more the fans are helping you build this coaster so i i thought we answered this question before um i but a lot of people are spamming it again so water rides not in this build but in the future, there Stay will be tuned. handles. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned on water rides. Dark and a couple rides other. are the same thing. Dark rides are a little bit different category than water rides, so okay. I, I'm not going to say much about that today. Okay. But um, so you know, it, I'm not too worried about it. Let me put it that way. So let's say let's just say that if you thought about it, we've we've posed it uh, to yeah. them. They've thought about it. They're not ready to make an announcement yet. This is a, a bit of marketing speak to <laughs> say, uh, we hear you and stay listening. <laughs> and, and not everything, um, you know, I don't want people to think that we're purposely saving things for expansion packs or DLC or stuff like that. Um, you know, we'll keep adding to the game as we go, right? So we, our, our goal here is to create a, just an amazing, oh, jeez. Success. <laughs> Slammed into a tree. Here you go. So uh, this is what I generally tell, because as a as a gamer myself, as a consumer of great gaming content, the best way to get what you want into a game is to just support it, right? So, you know, when this game launches, we're seeing it right here on the Alienware Twitch channel for the very first time. When this game launches, there's a, there's a great community that's ready for this game. So you guys get it and play it. That's how we get what we want built into the game faster. Right? So let's just support exactly the hell out of this game. That's exactly what it is, right? You know, we want to, you know, make stuff for this game for the next number, you know, just as long as we possibly literally can. And we want to release content for free as long as we possibly can. And, of course, we have expansion pack ideas too, right? Some things that people haven't even thought of, right? And, and, and just working with different partners and stuff on some really cool, exciting stuff for the future. Um, but right now our goal is to build just a really cool sandbox and a base game that lets you build whatever you want right our, our, our another key thing that we want to do is make it easy for everyone because we have a lot of fans but we're hoping to also introduce the game to a bunch of new players um, and we don't want it to feel intimidating right we want you to be able to build a coaster that's just as cool whether you're a hardcore fan and, and you spend those details that time to come up with those details or if you're going to spend that extra you, know, you just want to build something something easy yeah well i, I could tell you uh you know, when we first were talking about this game, almost about, gosh, about a year ago, maybe a little over a year ago, uh, you guys know Frank Azor, our, our, our head man over at Alienware. He's a huge Roller Coaster Tycoon uh, franchise fan, and he's absolutely excited about this. It, Frank was here at PAX on Thursday and Friday. He took off Saturday. He's probably going to be pissed that he missed this. But, <laughs> I, hey, Frank, you're watching this on VOD. Ha, ha, you saw it a day after me. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, so some fans were actually asking about uh, the park entrance. To prove that this is really happening, we're going to ask Andy to zoom in on it. We're going to show you. Um, there's a bunch of different maps that we're launching with. Um, they all have sort of unique entrances and, and theming and stuff like that. But the park entrance, not fully complete yet, right? You know, we haven't connected that road to the entrance, and, and, and that's still in the sort of polish phase that we're in right now. Um, but it does. It looks beautiful. It looks detailed. Everything reflects off of it just as you would expect, right? Uh, I also know that some people are asking about VR support. Uh, like I said, if you've asked about it in the forums, we've probably read it. We probably have it jotted down on our whiteboard. Um, I personally have been to a couple really cool VR demos here at PAX this time around. I brought my, you know, the technical director with us. Uh, it's really exciting when we. You know, if and when we do it, we're going to do it right. Uh, we want it to be a really cool experience, and, and I'm going to leave it at that for now. So, so, so if you guys have these suggestions, so where, where's a good spot for 
the community, uh, pe maybe people that are just tuning in for the first time and seeing this, where can they go and leave comments and suggestions? What, where's the official places? Sure. So the hub of all things Roller Coaster Tycoon is really rollercoastertycoon.com, right? You go to that website and you're going to get links for our Facebook page, our Twitter, uh, our Twitch channel once we sort of start that up, that process up. But if you want to really interact with the community and, and talk to other people that are just like you or fans, um, I pop in there as well a bunch. Go to our forums. Um, the link is uh, forums.rollercoastertycoon.com. Just go to our main site, click community, click forums, and awesome. you'll find where all these amazing fans that are on, on our Twitch channel right now, that's where they're hiding out. That's where uh, I, I like to go and work. <laughs> nice. That's going to turn into a meme, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so beyond PAX, you guys are here. You're at the NVIDIA booth where people can touch, feel, and experience this. Uh, it's being streamed for the very first time here. Beyond, so the show ends tomorrow. Beyond that, where, where, where are the plans? Are there any plans? Are there any other events? Uh, when can people experience it? Yeah. So as we're heading into the launch period, which is going to happen in uh, Q4 of 2015, that's this year, right? Um, this year, guys. Not this 2016. Year. 2015, it's coming. Yeah. We're working, on a, we're working really, really hard. There's a huge team behind this game up in Montreal at Invisio. They're doing an amazing job. Um, we sort of head into pre-orders. That's going to be one of the, the next sort of big items from a sort of sales and distribution standpoint. Um, so you'll see all that kind of information pop up. A beta, right? Uh, we're going to definitely reward our players uh, with a beta with beta access sometime. You know, this fall we'll announce the details of how to get into that beta, how to play the game, how to enjoy it before it comes out. Uh, and then, of course, there's launch, right? Those are your sort of big milestones. Um, there'll be. I know everyone's asking about the trailer. It's kind of funny. I was sitting there thinking about this. It's like, do we do we stream the game at the Alienware booth? before we've released the trailer. It's kind of a backwards way of doing things. Um, but that, that is how we do things here at Team RCT. <laughs> Show them what we've got right now, um, and then we'll make a really pretty marketing trailer later. Um, so you will see a trailer finally this fall. We're working on a bunch of other video content as well. Um, so that's all going to happen uh, over the course of the next couple months. So. It's, it's definitely stay tuned to the website, to the main website, for all this kind of information. All right, I'm, I'm going to pull in one more question because I've, I've seen it spam throughout. Uh, I think it's a wonderful and great idea. Um, can you sync up special effects with your rides? So as your roller coaster takes that full drop, having fireworks explode or things like that. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I know some of the fans are also asking, asking about the fireworks creator as well. Um, which they saw in RCT3. So it's definitely something on our minds, right? Um, it, it is one of those core features. So I, I, I kind of, you know, you've got my hint of when I say thing is a core feature versus not a core feature. So I know it's, it's important. Um, but that said, uh, we do have particle effects in the game that are really, really cool. Obviously, way better than you've probably seen in any of the video footage that we've released thus far. Um, so that's important. Actually, he's showing you some of the, the cloud here and stuff. But fountains, fire, all that kind of stuff. You know, some of our rides, uh, our flat rides that we're not showing off here have really cool fireworks. Yes, that rainbow. I saw someone's talking about that. That's in our night mode. That's, I believe that is the drop tower ride. Yep. That we're looking at there. So, yeah, let's see what other questions we got. Nice. Uh, what about themes? Are you able to have a theme within your park for a daytime mode, but then when you go to nighttime, have a different theme. Yep, so while, while I answer that question, everyone's asking about straight tracks. So I'm gonna ask Andy to make the world's most boring roller coaster that is just a straight little loop to prove that yes, in fact, you can build a straight roller coaster. <laughs> um, and also, I know some people asked about wider paths. Uh, yes, there's a bunch of different path lengths. Um, Kim. The, the sort of studio general manager who built this park. Um, she built all the paths on one size, but you can have, there's a bunch of different path sizes. Um, actually, we even have picnic tables in the game for the first time, so you can have food courts and things like that. Um, 
So because we know that people have asked for that level of detail in the simulation. So Andy's is Andy's building a straight, super straight little coaster there. He's not using the on-demand grid, which he could um, later on. We'll show you that. Uh, not not today, but we will show you how that works. But he, you, of course, you can build stri super straight. Straight lift hills, everything else like that. Um, there's a bunch of shops, stalls, all that kind of stuff is in the game. Uh, there we go. I'm watching him as he sort of completes this ride. Look at that. How easy was that? There. See? We've proved that we can do this. <laughs> Uh, you're guaranteed to get a ton of people in your park for building these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for those fans that so desperately want this, it is there if you want to build the most awesome. That's typically what my roller coasters end up looking like. So actually, this is a good segue. So if you're like me and, and you build really lame roller coasters and you focus on the simulation, um, then you're going to probably really like the Steam Workshop support that we have uh, and, the, and the social features that we have. So... When I say that, I don't mean social in like a dirty way. I mean social like this is going to make your game better way, right? So you can share your pre your parks. You can save a game, upload it to Steam Workshop, and share it with anyone they want, anyone you want, right? Um, you can also visit a friend's park. So we don't have multiplayer at launch, but you can go in and just visit a friend's park casually, right? That's for those people that just like, hey, I want to see what my friends are up to. We have an actual friend center built into the game, and you can go and see what your when your friends just played the game. You know, your Steam oh, friends, nice. see what they're doing, nice. see their park, a little snapshot, all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, you can build custom scenery, right? That's one of the huge modding requests that we've asked for, uh, that people have asked for, that we have delivered. Um, so if you want to have a pirate ship in the game. You can plop that right in. We have gone so far as to make it native to the UI. So uh, just something we've noticed, a lot of games, Steam Workshop becomes this sort of, uh, I guess, not really frictionless experience. It's kind of intimidating, right, um, for, for the more casual players. So we've actually taken all the Steam APIs that we can use and integrated them directly into the game. So it's part of the UI. So in that coaster menu, if you save a coaster blueprint that you've built, and you, you can share coasters, I should mention that with your friends too, uh, you'll see your Steam Workshop coasters pop up right next to the ones that we've made for you as well, uh, and the ones that you've made. And you don't have to ever leave the game to download coasters. The, the custom scenery is actually really fun and interesting because you can, uh, we've made sure that the custom scenery supports the rules that we're setting up. So if you want to make a Western scenery item and make sure that it affects the rise and the peeps in the game, you can actually. So you don't, you don't have to hack the game to trick it into thinking that it's, you know, scenery that you've made. If you want to go ahead and build that pirate ship and then say that pirate ship attracts a million people and everyone that gets next to it is going to feel this way or whatever, you can do that. Um, I will say, though, that in campaign mode, if you use custom scenery, your game's going to become unranked, right? Because it just wouldn't be fair to all those people that are trying to beat the game as sort of the way it was intended um, to, to beat it. Fair. That's fair. That's fair. So you, you guys are in the NVIDIA booth. Uh, there's been a question about SLI support. I would assume that that is probably definitely in, in the game. Yeah, so SLI support will be there. Yeah, you, what else are you going to do with your awesome and, and right. computer, right, with your two graphics card? You need um, a support. Are you guys at a, at, at, to a point where you've discussed or set a bar for minimum spec, right? So people that may have yep. an older PC, you know, like, are, are they left out? Are you guys are looking out for them? We're, yep, we're, yep. So uh, minimum spec is something that we're fine-tuning, right? You know, like I said, this is a, a development build, so of course we're running it on like one of the beefiest computers. Yes, they're the running it on, you know, the streaming area 51, but it will work on other PCs. <laughs> um, so we, we do have minimum specs that we've announced on our Steam page. Uh, you know, we're really sort of targeting uh, a dedicated graphics card. Um, I will say anecdotally, unofficially, we have played the game on integrated cards, but you know we're, we're really sort of making sure that that minimum spec falls with that dedicated card, that one gigabyte dedicated card. Um, at the same time, we we're gonna you know you're gonna need a little bit of memory. So like we're, to really get a good experience, you should have four gigs of memory, uh, and then 
you need a card that supports DirectX 11. That, that's even more than a dedicated card. That is the most important thing. Because you asked me about DirectX 12 earlier. So DirectX 11 and a 64-bit operating system is, is sort of key. Uh, that, we looked at sort of the Steam hardware survey, and, and we felt that covers a lot of people. Um, that's why we haven't necessarily gone to DX12 yet, is because, you know, we, we want the game to be able to be played by as many people as possible. For, for the old, old school franchise fans, um, yeah, you know, it's 2015, so yes, everything's kind of like, well, especially with PC gaming, it's digital delivery. But for those hardcore classic guys, will there be a limited edition run or something? Will there be a physical box copy of this to get? Yep, so we have announced box in 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 Europe and um, you know stay tuned for other it's gonna be you know just a, what you would expect the box copy we, you know we're working on a manual so whether or not you buy the box or the digital version you'll still get a digital you know a cool digital manual of the game um, you know that that's sort of the classic triple-a experience to a game right that's important at the same time yeah oh oh I should mention yes there is Nvidia SLI support um, we work really really closely with Nvidia on this game uh, they are already playing the game in their offices and tuning drivers to it so that we can offer the best experience on day one. Uh, so you, there will be special profiles for the game uh, to make sure that it really works for everyone you know, as best as possible. Uh, God, nice. Oh, yeah. So catwalks. Oh, catwalks. Oh, there yeah. you go. So Andy's showing you catwalks. So there are definitely catwalks in the game. Um, well, because, I mean, how else... But the people get off the ride <laughs> if it breaks down. Right, right. Yeah. You need a catwalk, of course. Nice. This is this is realistic roller coaster tycoon world. So. Uh, so I think the same person is spamming it over and over again, but I've seen it five or six times. Uh, Steam Workshop support in multiplayer. Yep, we talked about Steam Workshop yep, supports in I there. Multiplayer post yep. launch. Uh, release date, like I said, we're saying Q4 2015. Although, you know, stay tuned for, for the next couple weeks and months. Uh, we're going to obviously fine-tune that to an exact sort of yes. date. Oh, <laughs> so you, got, you guys don't go to rollercoastertycoonworld.com? Just rollercoastertycoon.com. Just rollercoastertycoon. All right, rollercoastertycoon.com. I will make sure uh, we get that up on Arena. We'll, we'll make sure we tweet that out, uh, and I'll spam it in chat uh, when we finish here in just a few minutes. Yep. Um, People also asking about custom buildings. I just want to yeah. get that before yeah. we wrap yep. up. Absolutely. In custom scenery through the scene workshop, you can literally make anything you want. We do not limit you. We have a really cool way to handle that. We're going to have a dev blog and a wiki and all that kind of stuff about that. But um, if, if you can dream it, you can make that scenery and put it in your game. So I, I, that is super critical. We are not limiting you in that respect. Awesome. So, guys, this, again, this is, the, this is the very first time this is uh, being shared with that wide audience. Uh, from Friday uh, at PAX was the first time the uh, consumers are, have been able to see it. The gaming community has a large. Uh, it's pretty much been kept under wraps uh, while they that while they bring it. And I think for the very first time, this looks phenomenal. I know with this type with this style of game, there's a ton of customizations and questions you guys have. Uh, Atari are great partners of ours. We're not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. Uh, when they hit those major milestones and they're ready to share more information, they have a welcome, open invitation to come back to our Twitch channel and uh, discuss that with you guys. You guys know where to drop them feedback. Awesome. Please do that. Uh, and this is the first of many, many Roller Coaster <laughs> Tycoon World streams uh, that we will be bringing to you guys up until launch and post-launch, right? Because we, we are fans. And like I said, maybe we'll even do a, a weekly segment. I, I probably get on Frank's schedule at least every other week, where we get the Alienware general manager to stream on the Alienware Twitch channel, Roller Coaster Tycoon World. <laughs> I'm going to make it happen. He's watching this in a day, right? You're right, yeah. <laughs> so, Frank, I've already signed you up. You've got an action item, my friend. Oh, I, I one other thing I noticed on the forums. I know we're kind of wrapping up here. Yeah. Um, peeps, uh, Andy's going to zoom in on the coaster station for us. Um, we have made. We have heard you. You. We know you want to see people get all the way onto the ride. That is going to happen. They are going to walk into the entrance. So, uh, if he zooms over to the left, you're going to build that queue line, just as you saw there, up until the entrance. And I know you can. You're going to be able to snake the queue line a little more uh, finely than we're showing you here. And then they'll walk into the coaster station, get in line, 
get into those air gates, and then walk onto the ride. Um, we're just not showing that here at PAX because that requires a little bit more polish than we had time for for this week, but that definitely is going to happen. So. Oh, you're, I think you're muted. I'm muted. All right, so last question before we go off. I think we answered it earlier. Uh, this person may have joined a little bit late. Will you be able to make videos and post them to YouTube? Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, we want you. That is what has kept this game alive for 10 years is people sharing content, and making amazing, beautiful things, and then sharing it with everyone. And that's why we've built a sharing center. That's why we've done Steam Workshop. It's why we have the Friend Center, right? We want you to enable to, for you to build anything. And then we want to grow the game with the community as we go, right? You saw us pivot literally 180 degrees with the art earlier this year. Um, that was for your request, and, and we're going to keep doing that. So when you buy this game, you're, you're buying into the franchise and, and, and the support of the game for just literally many years to come. Oh, and I, I know we're at the Alienware booth. People are asking about Mac. I got to address it. All I'm going to say is it's in Unity. It's in Unity 5, which supports a lot of different platforms. So just stay tuned. Hey, it's all love. Our Alienware channel exists to support PC gaming. I'll throw Max in there. It's not really a PC, but whatever. We're launching on Windows. Though, so <laughs> awesome. If you want to play this game on day one, you're going to need one of these bad boy computers. Hey, we're gamers at heart. I've got an Android phone, right? I'm gaming on this thing all the time. So awesome. Thank you guys for bringing this. Uh, Andy, Matt, like Thanks I said, come back often, whatever you guys want. All right, guys, we're going to take a little break. I'm going to talk with them a little bit Thanks, off everyone. stream. Thank you, guys. Uh, we'll be back with some more gaming content in three minutes or less. All right. Thanks, guys.